The architects of the internet made a lot of really wonderful decisions about how the internet is designed. And it's pretty impressive that the, some of the original internet protocols are still powering the internet decades later, despite the fact that the internet has gotten much larger and has really you know, expanded and grown and developed and flourished way past, I think, even some of the wildest imaginations of its early creators. So that's awesome. But there's one problem. There's one little thing that they didn't get quite Right. That has to do with IP addresses. So IPv4 addresses, 32 bits. Um, and that means that fundamentally there are only 4 billion IP addresses, IPv4 addresses. That's it. And in reality there's fewer than that because some of them are special and have special purposes, but, but whatever. So about 4 billion IP addresses. You might think, hey, that's a lot. And I'm sure that the architects of the early internet thought, this is great, you know, this is a lot of addresses, we'll never run out of them. Well, we ran out. We're out, basically. I mean, today we have a problem that's known as IPv4 exhaustion. So the IPv4 address space is pretty much completely allocated. Um, now, here's the problem. It's not necessarily perfectly allocated. Not every valid IP address out there is in use. But remember how we allocated IP addresses. We allocated them in these big blocks originally. You know, we gave certain organizations 16 million IP addresses and said, hey, here, uh, go have fun. And that turned out to be not a fantastic idea. So there's this issue of how do we use these IP addresses, but there's also this issue of how do we make more. Because fundamentally, 4 billion is smaller than the population of Earth. And eventually everybody on Earth is going to have a computer that's connected to the internet, at least one. And so we need more IP addresses. What are some of the solutions that we've tried to this problem? So there are things that we're sort of rolling out um, and, and things that are in use. So network address translation, which we talked about before, that allows computers to use private IP addresses. So, you know, uh, and each one of these solutions has pros and cons to it. So network address translation, you know, the pro is that uh, it allows us to use private addresses. Um, the, the con is that those computers can't can't run servers, they can't um, respond to clients. So these, uh, these computers are sort of limited on the role that they can play on the internet, right? So, but NAT is one of the big ways that we're addressing this problem. So a lot of the computers that connect to the internet don't have a public IP address. They have these private IP addresses that don't have to be unique, but also can't receive incoming requests. Another thing that we tried is something called CIDR. So this is called classless interdomain routing. Remember when the internet started, we had these three types of network. We had a class A network with 60 million hosts, a class B network with 65,000 hosts, and a class C network with 256 roughly hosts. And that didn't work out that well. Those networks weren't really the right size. And so what we started to do is we started to, rather than dividing, rather than creating prefixes that are all on 8-bit boundaries, we started to make prefixes that could be 20 bits, prefixes could be 18 bits, and what that means is that we can create networks that are any size that's a power of two. And those networks uh, frequently are much better matches for um, for the entities that are using them. So CIDR, you know, plus here is better size networks. Uh, the minus here is that this causes routing tables to get much bigger. So when you take larger networks that had a single routing prefix that they needed to advertise to routers on the internet and break them up into lots of smaller networks, the routing tables get bigger. So this is the drawback of CIDR. One thing that um, the Internet uh, Committee on, on Names and Numbers has been trying to do also with some success is actually reclaim blocks of IP addresses that weren't allocated very well in the beginning. Particularly approaching entities that receive these Class A networks with 60 million IP addresses and kind of being like, you know, we could kind of use those for something else. You know, you have more IP addresses than like whole countries in Africa. This doesn't seem like a good thing. So can we have some of those back and you know to some degree that works but you're sort of relying on them to acquiesce because they you know they were given these and there's some sort of you know agreement that's binding and so there's no requirement that they give those IP addresses back but if we can do this this helps 
Fundamentally though, all of these solutions don't address the real root of the problem, which is that the IP address space is just not big enough. And the big solution that we've known about for years and we're getting closer and we're going to get there is a improvement that the next generation of IP, which is something called IP version six. IP version six addresses um, are much, uh, are much wider. Um, so IPv6 has 128 bit addresses. So that means that it has two to the 128 addresses. I don't even know how long that is. So here we go. I found a website uh, that, that allows you to read it out loud. It's, <laughs> it's the number is like this long. Uh, it's probably, it, it certainly is more IP addresses than we'll ever need. So again, you go from 32 bits, um, to 128 bit addresses. So there is no, there's probably, this is probably a safe design choice. It's very unlikely we're going to run out of IPv6 addresses. However, this transition is going quite slowly. So in the meantime, we're, we're fighting the problem of IPv4 exhaustion using some of these other approaches.